the three options a divorcing couple has, and the seven things you must know when selling a house as part of that divorce. Now, there are three options a divorcing couple has when a house is involved. The first option is if one person does not want to sell. They actually have the option of buying out the other partner's legal interest and keeping the home. The second option is to negotiate and occupy the house for a period of time. We see this option many times when there are children involved. In many situations, there are times when children maybe are close to graduating, or just maybe the divorcing couple's attempting to provide some sort of familiarity during these challenging times. And the third option is to sell the house and move on. In this option, both parties will receive a fair share that many will use to invest in a new home. Option three is by far the most common solution to a divorcing couple that owns a property. And if that is the case, then there are seven things that this divorcing couple must know. The first must know is that you need to pick a real estate agent that is objectively qualified in divorce sales. It's worth the time to find an agent who specializes in working with separating couples as the situation can present a unique set of challenges. And in many cases, a real estate agent will double as a mediator when working with a divorcing couple. You'll also want to find an agent that both parties trust and feel comfortable with. Choosing an agent that neither person could feel that is on the other person's side is absolutely essential. It's always recommended to pick a fair and neutral realtor instead of hiring a friend, a family friend, a mutual acquaintance, and especially a family member. Picking an agent where there is no connection will help build each person's trust and make sure they feel confident that their personal situation is not getting back to their personal sphere of friends and family members. It's important that both parties are present for any listing interview. And if they both are not able to be present because maybe there's a tense situation, then to have that agent meet with both people at separate times. It's essential that the divorcing couple understands that their agent represents both of them equally. Oftentimes, when one party selects a real estate agent, the other, they just feel slightly this sense of mistrust is setting everyone up for a miserable process, which will only make the situation more tense. The second must know is that the divorcing couple needs to provide their agent with all the relevant details about the divorce decree. It's very important that your agent communicate with you, but it's also imperative for you to communicate with your agent. You'll need to share any stipulations regarding your house that have been laid out in this divorce decree. These decrees often include maybe which spouse has been appointed to act on behalf of the couple and has items typically relating to the listing price as well as the points in which price reductions happen should they be needed. Another example of what a divorce decree can say is maybe who's responsible for home repairs and the accessibility that must be provided for all showings. The third must know is that the divorcing couple needs to come to an agreement before that house is listed. It's very important that everyone agrees to the key details before that property is listed as this will help ensure a smoother process with less issues down the road. And less issues is always a good thing when you're talking about two of the most stressful things a person can go through, divorce and moving, and let alone doing them at the same time. Some of these items to consider and agree on are the list price and the lowest offer that you'd be willing to accept, a price reduction strategy, should it be needed, how involved in the marketing and process will each person want to be? For example, the person who's not living in the house, do they want to be notified of every single showing? If so, then great. What are the responsibilities of each spouse for staging, cleaning, and minor repairs? Which spouse, if any, will be staying in the house while it's being sold? The fourth must know is to consider the tax implications of the move. As we all know, death and taxes are life certainties. And in the case of divorce, we are really praying for no death. And we just need to know what the tax implications can become as they can become more complicated depending on how the sale is handled. Now, capital gains tax is a tax that you pay on the profit that you get when selling an investment. There are short-term capital gains as well as long-term capital gains with those rates changing depending on the political landscape. If you can avoid this capital gains tax, then you will walk away with more proceeds in the end. This could be tens of thousands of dollars. For real estate, there's actually a capital gain tax exemption of $250,000 for the individual and a half a million for a married couple. If not done correctly, you could lose $250,000 of the exemption. So it's important to structure your divorce and home sale to preserve this exemption. You'll want to talk with a tax professional to create a strategy for the best way to ensure that you limit this tax exposure. The fifth must know is that both people must find a middle ground. Otherwise, 
that decision is going to be made for them. And most likely, it's going to be one that neither person will like. Well, some divorces happen where both parties are able to handle the situation peacefully and reasonable. There are many times where the division of property is not so cut and dry. If both parties are not able to agree on a resolution, which includes by yourself or through mediation with your attorney, then the court, they're gonna make that decision for you. A judge, they'll make these decisions for you and can even allow your spouse to make all the decisions relating to the sale. It's rarely a pleasant experience and the judge rarely decides like either party would like. It's also important to know that in most states, if one party has the means to pay out the other partner's interest and wants to keep the property while the other party wants to sell, then the court will not force the sale and will allow this buyout to happen. The sixth must know is that you should not completely move out of the house. Experts recommend that at least one person stay in the house until it sells. The reason for this is that vacant homes do not show as well and that it has been proven that stage homes sell faster and for more money. Having one person stay in the house will mean that there is furniture that remains in the house, and this will help ensure that any maintenance items, they won't be neglected. Staging a house, it can cost thousands of dollars, so one person remaining in the house can be a prudent financial decision for both parties. If it is at all possible to keep some nice furniture, fixtures, and maybe some home accessories, then this will help keep your seller's costs down while helping them net more on the sale. Not to mention that if both parties move out, three housing payments each month could be very expensive and may not be sustainable for most divorcing couples. It's always best for a divorcing couple to wait until the sale is close to being guaranteed before moving out of the house. Now the seventh must know is to never give the reason of divorce as to why you're selling. This really should be obvious, but it is amazing how many times an agent will provide a prospective buyer this information, and sometimes they do it without even being provoked. Any agent that discloses this is inexperienced and doesn't understand that the implications of saying this can cost a seller thousands of dollars. When a potential buyer hears divorce, they assume that they have some leverage in this sale, as a divorce makes people assume that the divorcing couple, they must sell and must sell quickly. This oftentimes can result in buyers offering less than they might otherwise would have. Many factors play a role in a divorce sale. It's important to work closely with your divorce real estate agent and attorneys to ensure selling your house during your divorce will be worth it. For a free, no obligation consultation for owners wishing to sell, please contact me at 617-480-2600 or by email at jeff at boston2.com. All conversations are completely confidential. My name is Jeffrey Chubb. My team, the Chubb Homes team, were brokered by eXp Realty and we're here to help.